thermodynamic considerations for halogenation. This will actually have an effect on the selectivity. Recall, delta G has an enthalpy term, delta H, and an entropy term, minus T delta S. In halogenation of methane, we go from a molecule of methane and a molecule of halogen, two molecules, to a molecule of methyl halide and a molecule of haloacid, two molecules. This tells us that the value of delta S is pretty close to zero. Now let's estimate the delta A. Delta H will approximately be the summation of the bond dissociation energies for the bonds that are broken minus the same summation for the bonds that are formed. The bonds that are broken in this reaction are shown in blue. The bonds that are formed are shown in red. So our delta H is going to approximately equal the bond dissociation energy for the CH bond plus the bond dissociation energy for the halogen-halogen bond minus the bond dissociation energy for the carbon-halogen bond minus that for the hydrogen-halogen bond. The constant, regardless of which halogen you react with, is the methyl-hydrogen bond that is broken. It's 435 kilojoules per mole. The strength of the halogen-halogen bond, XX, varies widely depending on which halogen you're using, being 159 for FF, 243 for CLCL, 193 for BRBR, and 151 for II. A carbon-fluorine bond at 456 kilojoules per mole is exceptionally strong, whereas a carbon-chlorine is 351 and a carbon bromine is 293, and a carbon iodine is the weakest at 234. And then the hydrogen halogen bonds follow the same pattern as the carbon hydrogen bonds, namely, the shorter the bond, the stronger the bond. If we do the calculation for fluorination, we get that delta H is negative 431 kilojoules per mole. This is really exothermic. It'll probably explode. For chlorination, it's only negative 104 kilojoules per mole. Still exothermic, still spontaneous, but it's not going to blow up in your face. For bromination, we get 33, or sorry, negative 33 kilojoules per mole. This will be slower. So, fluorination, way too fast. Chlorination, fast. Bromination, slow. For radical iodination, we get that it's endothermic. So, the two that are synthetically useful are chlorination and bromination. Now, say we're dealing with halogenation of an ethane. The first step for chlorination will be exothermic, right? This is hydrogen abstraction where the halogen abstracts a hydrogen from the ethane and creates an ethyl radical and a halo acid. It's exothermic for HCl because the HCl bond is strong. But it's endothermic for bromine because the HBr bond is weaker. In the second propagation step, the ethyl radical abstracts a halogen from another molecule of halogen, which is exothermic for both. In the net reaction, 
the chlorination is more exothermic than the bromination. Chlorination will happen faster than bromination, but bromination will be more selective. To explain the difference in selectivity, we need to invoke the Hammond postulate. The Hammond postulate states that the closer two states are on a reaction coordinate diagram, the more alike they are. The two states we're considering are the transition state and the radicals. Now, in an exothermic reaction, the transition state is more like the reactants. Hence, there is very little separation between the formation of a primary, secondary, and tertiary radical. In the endothermic, first step for bromination, the transition state is more like the radical. And since a tertiary radical is much more stable than a secondary radical, which is much more stable than a primary radical, bromination favors the more substituted radical. So we get a high degree of selectivity. Whereas with chlorination, because the first step is exothermic, we have low selectivity. So if we have 2-methylpropane as our substrate, and we subject it to chlorination, 65% goes through a tertiary radical, and 35% goes through a primary radical. So the tertiary is the major product, but this is still like going to the gas station and pouring three and a half gallons on the ground and only putting six and a half gallons in your tank. On the other hand, since bromination is so selective, we get 100% tertiary and 0% primary. This means that bromination is the one we want when selectivity is an issue.